Hey everybody, welcome to the main event, The David Show. And today I'm going to talk about Barbra Streisand. But for you, those of you that are not Streisand fans, and I know I have friends here on Facebook who aren't, unfriend me now, just kidding. Um, it's still a good story. So just if you if you're not a Barbara fan, just insert your favorite artist into this story and come along with on the ride with me, and you'll get a couple of laughs because this is a pretty funny story and interesting. So picture it, 1993 turning into 1994, Barbara Streisand announces she's finally going to overcome her fear of an audience and perform at the grand opening of the MGM Grand Hotel. Tickets sell within an hour, and this is before computers were really being used for any home use, and uh, you would have to call a phone number and try to get through. And I tried and tried and tried, and I couldn't get through. Luckily, because of Pam and her connection with the Andrews sisters, we threw around her, her, uh, Patty Andrews name and I got tickets well the problem is I got tickets they said for New Year's the, the, there was gonna be two concerts New Year's Eve and New Year's Eve day they told me when we got the tickets that I got the tickets for New Year's Eve day which isn't as great as New Year's Eve sorry Jasper bye but the New Year's Eve day not New Year's Eve tickets I call my friend Craig hi Craig and I said, I got the tickets, let's book the flight, because I live in California, this is in Las Vegas, uh, let's book the hotel, so we do all that. And I get the tickets. And lo and behold, the tickets were for New Year's Eve, not New Year's Eve day. The problem is, if you're familiar with Las Vegas, it's very hard to get a room on New Year's Eve, especially when it's at the last minute. And we also had to pay a lot of extra money to fly to Vegas because I had to change. We had to change our, our flight, so we paid the extra money and we had no hotel. We get there. You have to understand, as I tell you the story, nothing with me ever goes smoothly, ever. We get to Vegas with no hotel, uh, no place to sleep, and we literally walked the strip and surrounding areas for a place to spend the night. Um, because after the concert, we didn't know where we were gonna go. Like we were, the concert was that evening and we had no place to sleep and our flight was out the next day. Nothing had a room, no place at all. We were on waiting lists everywhere, but no place opened up. We had no place to sleep. So we were like, okay, you know what? We're gonna see Barbara Streisand finally for the first time in concert. Um, Let's just be happy with that, and we'll worry about where we're going to sleep afterwards. So we get to the concert venue, and the first person I see is a celebrity. Unfortunately, the celebrity really liked me and really tried to pick up on me, and that celebrity was Richard Simmons. Oh, yeah, he liked me. Now, I'm flattered. I'll take any pickups from anyone, you know, especially then, uh, but it was Richard Simmons. <laughs> No offense to you Richard Simmons fans out there. We get into the concert. Oh, sorry, I skipped a part. We're in line waiting for the concert and some redneck asshole said, who would pay money to see that big nose bitch? I almost got into a fight right then and there, but I didn't. I behaved myself because I didn't want to get kicked out and risk missing the concert. We get into the concert and we get seated and I had to go use the restroom. So, I leave my ticket like an idiot with Craig. I go out of the venue, use the restroom. I walk back into the venue before the show starts. And I can't remember where the hell my seat is. I can't find Craig. There's a million people there. I'm standing in the middle of this huge auditorium, not auditorium, concert hall. And I'm lost. And I'm confused. And I'm hearing... Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Streisand will be on in five minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Streisand will be on in two minutes. And I'm in tears. I'm running around trying to find Craig. 
I try to run up an aisle and I tripped over the little platform before the aisle and fell on my face in front of in an entire section of an audience of people. Finally, right when it got down to one minute until Miss Streisand comes on stage, I found Craig. I don't even know how. By the grace of God, I found Craig somehow. I got seated next to him, back to my seat. The concert started. The concert was incredible, by the way, despite the uh, man behind me that was singing along with every tune. And then it was time to um, get souvenirs. They had souvenir tents and everything up in the casino, right? I spent 700 and some odd dollars on Barbara Streisand souvenirs. I thought, this is it. She's never going to perform again. I was much more obsessed with her then than I am now. I still love and adore her, but I was like really a stalkerish, borderline stalkerish fan back then. And the local news happened to catch me or overhear me telling Craig, I can't believe I spent 700 and something dollars on souvenirs. All of a sudden, the cameras, the anchormen, whatever they're called, on location people start chasing me down the strip. And I did make it on the news. Okay, I made it on the news and I said, yes, I'm a big fan. I think I, I was so nervous, you know, I, I don't remember exactly what I said. Um, and I never saw it. I never saw it on the news because I don't live in Las Vegas and we slept in the airport that night, which had no TV sets. By the way, that's where we slept was in the airport terminal. Anyhow. Um, it was a fun experience. She's still my inspiration. I, uh, she's still, you know, the best female vocalist singer ever. And if you don't agree with me, that's fine, but I adore her. And I, I was happy to share that experience with my friend Craig, who I've been friends with for a very long time. So that's my little story. Now my complaint is going to link right to this story. And I don't care if this person who I think is still friends with me sees this. Let him unfriend me. Let's, let's put it that way. Let him unfriend me. I wouldn't care. Uh, recently, I was contacted by somebody, another Barbara Streisand fan on here that said that he was on the news right before I was on the news. And he has it. And would I like would I like him to send me a copy of seeing myself on the news? And I thought that was such a nice gesture. And I said, my God, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And he sent it to me. And I, I watched myself for the first time since 1993 into 1994, being interviewed on the news right after the Streisand concert, right after his little clip came mine. And I shared it on Facebook and I told everybody, this is me in 1993 on the news after the first Streisand concert in years. Thank you so much to so-and-so, fill in the blank of the, uh, the guy's name that shared it with me. And you know what he did? He took it down. He removed it. He didn't want me to share it. I don't know why it was a sacred thing or what have you, but he removed it. And I got to see it one time and nobody else got to really see it because Maybe people, maybe it was a control thing, you know, maybe he didn't like the fact that he was at the beginning, which I totally respect if that was the case. Then you, you, you message me and you say, you know what, I'm in this clip too, and I don't really want to be on Facebook and I would have removed it and I would have at least had it in my saved messages on Facebook to look at myself. I would have totally respected that, but to just snatch it away from me like that, I thought was just totally totally shitty. So, like I said, I don't know if he watches this show. I'm not going to tag him. I'm not going to mention him, his name. He knows who he is. But that was a shitty thing to do. And I didn't unfriend him because I didn't want to lower down, you know, to that level either. But it was shitty. With that, I want to tell you guys I'm going to film one more show. And then I'm going to Arizona with my sister. She got a great job opportunity. We're taking a little road trip. So I might be filming from Arizona. I might be filming. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I film on the road, on the drive? Should I film from the hotel? I don't know. It's going to be fun. My sister won't be on camera. I know that. But um, I can try to talk her into it. We'll see. With that, I hope you have a great day. Take care of yourself. Take care of your animals. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.